What's going on everybody? My name is Kevin Griffith and this is the Holler Barbecue. So today we're going to be doing some hanger steak. So sit right there and let's get to cooking. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Hey, once again, sorry it's been so long since I've done something. As most of you know, I'm, my wife and I are building a house right now. We're living in our travel travel trailer, so we don't really have, you know, I don't really have that much space to be shooting the videos the way I once did. Um, but we're about a month out, so getting close to Christmas, be looking for a lot more videos. But hey, today we're gonna be doing some hanger steak. So the hanger steak I got, I got from a, a local meat market, and that's that's where I would suggest getting it. Um, if you can see this one, it's 1.23 pounds. This was 12 bucks a pound, so it came out to $14.76. So 12 bucks a pound is a little bit more expensive for a hanger steak. Hanger steak's been known as being a cheaper cut. Um, what this is, it comes from a the, the plate portion of, of, the, of the beef. But the place that I got it from is a more higher end butcher shop, which has really good quality meat. So that's why I spent a little bit more, but you know, 14 bucks for this, this would be enough meat for my family. So I, I think it's, it's perfectly worth it. If you go into a grocery store, you might be able to find it, you know, quite a bit cheaper, but the best place I found to actually get it is a butcher shop because it's kind of rare to find in, in a grocery store. Now, if you do find it most likely, so, so this is basically two pieces of the hanger steak. You can see where it was cut on both of these sides. Usually these pieces are together and there's a piece of uh, really thick, hard fat that runs down through the middle. You basically just need to cut that out. And then once you get as two leftover look at tenderloin uh, looking pieces of meat. You know, it's pretty marbled up, almost like a ribeye. It has real beefy flavor, just like a ribeye, but it's also really tender. That's what, this was known as the butcher's cut because usually the it was it was always uh, known that the butchers would usually keep this for themselves and not sell it to their customers. It's going to be a really quick cook, so to get it ready, all we're going to do is just put just a little bit of oil on each one. You don't need a ton. Just rub it in. And as far as seasons, keep it super simple. Just salt, pepper, garlic, onion. And then we'll let that just sit while our fire's getting ready. So today we are cooking on the PK. If you can see, I got this new divider from the burn shop that I'm using. This thing is awesome, man. It, it, it's, it concentrates your fire on one side. You can not have the divider, use it all over. But for hooking steaks, I like to pile it up on the left side where, you know, more inside the, the cooker so I can concentrate the heat and we can get really good sears on it. And all we're doing is just taking a little bit over half of a chimney full of charcoal. I lit it up with one of these tumbleweeds from uh, Royal Oak, and then just gonna dump it right on the left side. And once the grill heats up, it's gonna be real quick cook, and we'll go over that in a minute. Now, of course, it starts raining as soon as I get ready to start cooking, but that doesn't stop us. We'll go anyway, so it's pretty quick cook. We're going to just lay it right over the hot coals, cooking direct. You know, they're pretty thin. So I'm gonna go about a minute aside and just flip until we hit an internal temperature of between 125 and 130. All right, one minute's done. Now, if you have thicker ones, I'd go minute and a half, two minutes. So we'll just keep flipping it these ones since they're kind of thinner every minute until we're at our tent. All 
All right, we're about five minutes in. But my thinner one, I just checked it actually because I was more worried about it. It's actually pretty much done. Let's see where it's sitting at. We might be getting a little bit too high. Yeah, we're, see, we're already over 130 on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one. So about five minutes is all it took for that dude. Now this one, a little bit thicker. So we'll see where we're sitting on that one. Thought we're upside down. So we're about 112 on that one. We'll just let that one continue to go. But All right, so we're on our last one. And it's been about seven minutes. Yeah, we're, we're done on it. Now I'm just gonna let them rest for about five minutes just to let the juices get where they need to be. And then we'll uh, take a look at them. All right, we've been resting up. So let's go ahead and start carving this. So it's not that difficult to carve it. Like I said, it's super tender. Should probably have a fork right now, but I don't have one out here with me. All right, so this one got done a little bit more than I was liking. I mean, we still got some pink in there. The, the light's not picking up very good on here. I mean, I mean, it's good enough. It, this is just this is really good meat, so it's, it stays super juicy. We're probably medium, maybe a little bit tad more than medium. Eh, maybe not. Maybe we're we're medium. Let's give it a try. Super beefy flavor. If you like steak, that has a pretty strong flavor. Get you some hanger steak. Like I said, it's really easy to cook too. It only took us between six to seven minutes on this whole cook. Minute aside, just keep flipping until you get your internal, internal temperature. All right guys, that's it for our hanger steak. Thanks for watching. As always, you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And always, holler back.